Hello everyone, today we're going to paint this 462. Uh, the Montreal Train Expo is uh, next weekend, so if you can make it, that would be awesome. I know I'm going, I'll make a video on, on that. It might take me a couple of weeks to do it, but I will do it. So I just wanted to take a little uh, aside here and show you what this supposed to is supposed to look like if it's in mint condition and they do have some uh, smoke deflectors or elephant ears as i like to call them so this one is one of the newer ones actually no it's the exact same type and it has uh, traction tires we'll fix that on the other one anyways this is how they look if they're mint with the smoke deflectors and uh, lots of railroads, lots of American railroads had smoke deflectors. Um, Delaware and Hudson had some, Union Pacific had some, um, New Haven, I think, and uh, of course CN and CP. So you could get away with just putting a nice paint job on this and what it would still look American. So I'll just shove it shove this back in its box all right so I'm gonna set up to paint this I'm going to put it on a piece of cardboard that's gonna help me to keep it steady so I'll just take a piece of cardboard uh, bend it like this so it's gonna hold my train steady and then I'll just uh, stick that in there like that that way I can paint under it if I need to which uh, I think will be a good idea. I'll just roll up some masking tape. And this will help me to keep it steady in there. Then I'll just set it on the box like that. So I can have a nice steady surface to paint it. I'm going to paint it with some uh, trim clad uh, gloss black. Or in the States I think it's called Rust-Oleum. So... Uh, I'll do that off camera, but I've got m a lot of videos on painting if you're interested. Oh, and I almost forgot, I'm going to put a light in this. So I want to mask uh, my headlight, and I'm, for that I'm using uh, school glue. Uh, don't use the carpenter's glue, use the school glue. Because the carpenter's glue is just uh, too strong. It can actually cause damage to your uh, your setup. So use just a regular uh, school glue. And uh, it works just like masking tape. So I'll let that dry for a couple of minutes here. Well, all right. While my paint is drying, I'm going to work uh, on the drive system. So I am going to start by cleaning the wheels. I'm going to remove this little, uh, let me get the camera to focus here. I remove the little pilot track here first, just so I can clean it just a little bit better. So I don't want to remove um, that plate just yet because it's going to keep my gears, um, it's going to manage my gears for me. I have to get that screw to drop. That may not be so easy. It's like that, you know, working on N scale, everything's small, so. You got to use your patience. That's what they say, you know, I have a lot of patience. P A T. ENS. That's why they call me the train doctor. And then I'll just uh, screw it right back. And then instead of removing all these wheels one by one and cleaning them, I'm going to use my rag and just clean them like that. And then I'll put it on my um, test lead and I'll move it a quarter turn and 
turn, I'll clean that other quarter of a turn. So I'm going to do the rest of that off camera. As you can see, there's a groove here uh, for a traction tire. So we're going to be replacing this now. These are the uh, replacement tires I'm using. I replaced uh, tires on my GS4 with this. These are the correct replacement tire for the C62, which I did get from Japan. I don't speak Japanese, but I speak uh, model train. So this is the Kado parts number. The exchange rate with the yen is very favorable. So if you need traction tires for your American steam engines, the GS4 or Hudson or something like that, um, you can get them from Japan. I haven't ordered anything from Plaza Japan in quite a while, but um, I, I need to order something soon. Uh, I'm looking for a Z-scale track. I want to build a small Z-scale railroad. Um, I looked into the Z-scale freight cars from Japan. There's some available, but they're not super attractive. I think I'll be buying them uh, from micro trains. So I'm using these really cheap uh, Japanese engines, but I'll be using really, really good micro trains or freight cars. I won't be going cheap uh, for that. I'll just buy the ones that I like. And I'm not buying a ton. I'm going to buy two or three to start with the caboose but it's going to be uh, the things that I like, spend a little bit more money. Okay, so for this, you have to remove the very small pin here. There's no choice. So make sure that you get a good night's sleep before you attempt this. All you got to do is pry under here. These, they don't have a tendency to fly off, but they are very small, so there's no spring uh, involved here. They're just very small. So you have to manage them accordingly. And then we'll just lift this uh, connecting rod up and slide the, uh, the traction tire under that. And that will be that. We'll just place it where it should go and then we'll stretch it out to finish the job. Almost there. Did I say that the end scale was small and uh, you needed patience? That's a fact, 100%. It's the correct part for that. Look at that. You can't see it from the side. So I'll put the, uh, the pin back on and I'll do the same thing on the other side. I had to do it uh, off camera to keep the, uh, the video kid friendly. So uh, that's that. Uh, it's, a, it's a pain in the derriere, pardon my French. But uh, once it's done, you get the equal feeling of satisfaction. So I'm going to clean uh, the little pilot wheels now. Having them off the engine, it allows me to uh, just get in there and do it. And these conduct electricity, they pick up electricity for the engine. There's a little um, copper tab there that uh, contacts the the plate and brings electricity to the engine so not just for looks it's important to have them clean but also um, for conductivity so we'll do the same thing the trailing truck also has um, a place to conduct electricity so We'll get into that as well. This guy right here, it has some copper plates. Now usually, Kado engines usually, great focus. 
Usually, Cardo engines, they have uh, plates for conductivity. Usually, it's uh, stuck on or riveted on uh, or screwed on. This is a rivet, which is unusual. So, you can't get in there. You got to somehow clean these. So, that's going to take a little while, but I'll get it done. So, you have to do it like that. Take your time. I guess that's part of the fun. Hey, we're moving right along. Uh, now that my wheels are clean, I'm going to remove this plate and we'll do a little bit of lubrication. So I keep the engine upside down because I do not want uh, the gears to jump their, uh, their place. That can even stay in the plate. I love this little bottom plate because it has the brake detail. That is some good stuff. And you can see all the inner workings of the 462, 464, C62. So we're going to re-lubricate this. You don't need a lot. Just a drop. This engine such a smooth runner. By the way, I ran it last week. It ran great. Um, I don't know why I'm cleaning it or lubricating it for that matter. There's really no need for anything. But, you know, since I have it in my hands, may as well. Then we'll just put this right back. But I put it up upside down. That will not work. So I will put it the right side. Put it back correctly. And then I will just run it for two seconds just to spread out the uh, spread out the lubrication and also I guess I, I put some on the gears. I don't know if they really need it, but at the same time, it's uh, you're taking a guess because it might draw in some dust and ballast and scenery foam but at the same time i'm here may as well do it so i'm just going to run the engine very slowly for about uh, 50 seconds it still runs beautifully while i was doing that i was looking at my valve gear making sure everything was good so i don't have access to the center bearing but it makes no noise and everything is good there there's a worm gear here, so I'm going to open this up and I'm going to try not to wreck anything. So I'm going to try to open this up and we'll probably put a, a drop on the worm bearing. Uh, on the worm bearing, yeah, we'll put a drop on the worm bearing and then on its uh, two little uh, plastic bearings. They could use some lubrication but then we'll just snap that right back into place and then i'll run it some more just to make sure that everything is good so we're going to put an led in there this is what you order 0603 a uh, white uh, 12 volt with resistor these all have their little resistors so we're going to take one of these out and we're going to install that uh, on our uh, drive system. There's a little weight that goes here, but because of my resistor, I need uh, I need the extra room. So I'm going to put this. Um, I'm going to take this away just for that. So how I do it, the absolute uh, easiest way possible is I will take my two LED leads so there's not much room under there so thankfully these wires are very thin so they'll fit under the boiler shell so I'll take a piece of cardboard and I'll take one lead that'd be awesome if my camera would focus so I'll take one lead on one side one lead on the other side 
and then I'll sandwich them uh, between the frame like that I'll just sandwich them in there and I think I'm going to put them here but I'm going to sandwich them in there and that should give me uh, power that should work my light so I'll loosen these two screws oh it's hard look at that I did not expect that I have to come back with a bigger tool which I have oh it's very tight I did not expect that so I'll loosen them this one wasn't so tight not all the way i just need a little slack in here just to slide uh, my wires in and that's all also i take note that all leds are directional so this will be directional lighting So now I'm going backwards, so there's no light whatsoever. I'll just switch the direction Turn around. And going forward, my light uh, is nice and bright. So that is the lazy way of how to put light uh, on an engine. I would put the light if I want to put a backup light I would put it the uh, opposite direction here let me show you what I did I put the resistor which is the red on this side and the negative on this side so that's all you need to do now to roll up this wire to get it out of the way but uh, I'm almost done with that so my engine came back from the paint shop very shiny so we're gonna put the uh, decals on this I've got my uh, Canadian national decals ready to go and I've got the, the numbers I find the numbers on the Canadian national set I find the numbers a little bit too pale so I'm going to be using numbers from my uh, Pennsylvania leftover set so I'm just going to cut up, cut up what I need and we'll be installing it. So I'll just slide my decal into place using, uh, using my trusty toothpick or my finger, whatever the case may be. And then I'll slide it around till I find a place where I'm happy right in the middle sounds great a little bit of decals like this makes a lot of difference same thing for the cab a little bit of decals makes a lot of difference so if you're a beginner that's it you're done uh, I'm going to add some dull coat to make it look just a little more realistic. I put some coal, uh, some masking tape over the coal because I want to keep that shiny. With the dull coat, it looks much more professional. And this tender, I didn't do anything to it. It still looks pretty American. So there's not, uh, not a ton to do to it. So I left the coal shiny. And I put the rest of the uh, the tender on uh, on the doll coat. Same thing from the for the for the cab. Looks much better with the doll coat. I'm gonna remove the little uh, piece of glue I put there, and that should let uh, my light uh, shine through. So I'm gonna put everything back together. I think I am going to start by putting my uh, my cab right on top of this. So I'm putting it back together. I'm showing you the steps. 
So you can start with the, the air tank at the front and then bring back the uh, the rear of the locomotive. And that should snap, Up, snap right in there. Nice and easy. And then we'll bring in uh, the tender. So the tender, the rearmost truck is just a little snap. That should snap back in. Like so. And then this goes under uh, the firebox. And attaches to the tender. And that has a little screw. So be sure not to lose that. Get your Phillips head screwdriver. And this that can be a little tight, but uh, you don't need it very tight. It still has to be able to swivel. And then we'll reattach that to the rest of the engine. Well, what do you guys think? Is this uh, easy or hard to work on? Make sure you can see, see what I'm doing. So it will just go in there and then put the screw back. I'm just going to start it. I won't tighten it because I still want the front part of it to be able to move a little bit. We'll remove that screw. You gotta remove the screw uh, completely so your front truck can get in there. There. Your front truck has to be able to get in there. And then we could put the screw back. love the way these fit together everything's so um, precise everything's so precise and it shows in the way it runs so 20 years old this engine and it's still going okay perfect uh, let's put it on the track and see what we got And now it's time to run some trains. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I certainly had fun making it for you. See you soon.